Originally built about 1875 to carry School Lane over the railway line connecting Manchester with Derby, the bridge was designed to carry the loads and vehicles in use at that time, mainly horse-drawn carts. Since then, the ravages of time and increasingly heavy traffic rendered the bridge unsuitable for present-day needs. Reconstruction work started in January 1987 the first task being to provide an uninterrupted pedestrian route along School Lane to and from Dinsbury Village. A footbridge was erected using a fully braced scaffold system with a timber decking. Following completion of this temporary footbridge, demolition of the existing walkway began. This walkway was added in the 1960s as a safer pedestrian crossing because traffic had increased to the extent where the original narrow pavement had become completely inadequate. With the bridge now closed to wall traffic and following the removal of the road surface, the wrought iron girders had to be removed. Some of these, being firmly embedded into the brick abutments, had to be broken out with a pneumatic breaker before they could be lifted out of position. The original form of construction using jack arches between iron girders produced a very substantial structure in the relative short term, but in the end this was the very root of the bridge's destruction. Once water, often containing road salts, started to find its way through the upper layers of the construction to the iron girders, corrosion of these structural components soon followed. Unlike a modern steel bridge, where all the metalwork is exposed and can be regularly inspected and repainted when necessary, the wrought iron in these structures was cocooned in brickwork, making regular maintenance impossible. The corrosion continued until the girders deteriorated to the state where the deck became unsafe and the bridge could no longer remain in service. Eventually all the main deck girders were lifted out and transferred to spare ground across the road where they were cut up ready for removal and weighing in for scrap. Finally all that remained was the central lattice pier which had been installed as a means of propping the ageing structure and extending its life. In the reconstruction, the wrought iron girders were replaced by 16 pre-stressed, pre-cast concrete beams brought from Nottingham on special lorries. Each beam, measuring 40 metres long and weighing five tonnes, and lifted by an 80-ton capacity crane, had to be manoeuvred precisely into position on previously placed elastomeric bearings. This form of side-by-side -side construction requires accurate placing of the beams within a tolerance of plus or minus five millimetres.
transverse reinforcement inserted into the holes in the webs of the beams are an important factor in the deck design, enabling concentrated wheel loads to be evenly distributed across the width of the deck. Poker vibrators were used to cast the concrete around the beams to form a monolithic deck. A mobile pump fed by trucks carrying ready-mix concrete was used to place 120 cubic meters of concrete in one continuous operation. A good quality finish to the top surface of the deck was achieved by using hand floats and vibratory screens. It is necessary to ensure that freshly laid concrete does not cool or dry out too quickly and this was achieved by covering the finished work with a double layer of heavy visqueen sheeting. With the main structural elements of the new bridge now complete and the type of work changing to general roadworks, it was necessary to tidy up the site in preparation for the work ahead. Parapets capable of resisting vehicle damage were being built from solid bricks and concrete before being capped with concrete coping stones. Electricity, gas, telephone and water services, which had either been temporarily cut off or diverted before the bridge work began, had to be reconnected and relayed in their permanent positions in the pipe bays in the bridge deck. Following the relaying of the services, the ground on either side of the bridge was prepared in readiness for the laying of the stone sub-base on the bridge approaches. There is a lot of activity at this stage of the project, with a wide range of works being undertaken in preparation for the laying of the blacktop, which will comprise an initial 25 mm thick layer of sand asphalt, followed by 60 mm of asphalt base course, and finally a 40 mm thick layer of hot rolled asphalt wearing course, into which granite chippings will be rolled to improve the skid resistance of the road surface. In a few days time, School Lane will be reopened to traffic and this important link to Didsbury Village reinstated, much to the relief of the local residents. But not until a lot of heavy equipment has been brought in to lay the blacktop. There were road rollers, Blornox asphalt layers, mechanical diggers, granite hoppers and lorries delivering hot asphalt causing parking problems in the immediate locality. A quiet word in the right ear by the site engineering staff can sometimes appease the most warring factions. The Blornox moves back to receive hot asphalt ready for another spread. Whilst granite chippings are loaded into hoppers, which the Blornox will pull behind it as it spreads the 40mm thick layer of hot rolled asphalt in a very precise operation.
whilst all the blacktop over the main deck is applied by mechanical means, that over the side street approaches requires manual application due to the irregularities of the surface in shape and depth and to ensure an overall level finish. Manholes and gullies have to be raised and compressed air and water sprayed to clear the stone sets of loose material. followed by a spray-on tack coat of bitumen emulsion to the clean sets to ensure adhesion to the main layer of asphalt. Awkward corners are filled in and rolled before the blow knots can be brought in to apply the final layer. This bridge is just one of many highway structures that are currently being rebuilt in Manchester as part of the City Council's programme of bridge refurbishments, aimed at making Manchester's roads suitable for the traffic of the 1990s and beyond. There are just a few tidying up jobs to be done before the work is fully completed. But the road is again open to traffic for the first time for nine months. The old bridge served road users well for almost a hundred years. With the new bridge now in place, residents of Disbury can look forward to many more years of safe passage over the old railway line, which itself could be rejuvenated with the coming of the new light rapid transit system to Manchester, aimed at linking Disbury once again with the city centre.